Hey, JP here. This is an update about what's happening with JP Aerospace for June 2023. I'm going to cover the Ellipse, our new airship, the submarine, our helium production program, the latest plasma engine work, the upcoming Away 133 mission, and finally, the restoration of our mission control van. Let's start with the Ellipse airship. The purpose of the Ellipse is to figure out how to give the airship an elliptical cross-section with air beams as the inner structure. The airship hasn't even flown yet and has already taught us a lot. Each time we inflate it, we discover something else that totally didn't work, but it has always led us to a solution. We're in the middle of a major structural upgrade to the vehicle. And it all has to do with these red loops. When we were developing the air beams, we discovered that you can use an extreme lightweight fabric for the outer shell if you put loops in every foot. With the loops, you end up with a much lighter system compared to one that if you used an even slightly heavier fabric. Now to attach the air beam to the leading and the trailing edges of the wing, we've sewn those loops to the inside of the outer envelope of the airship. To save weight, we just use the same loops. The pressure support loops also hold the air beams in place. So far, so good. But there's a problem. To save weight on plumbing, the air beam on the ellipse is one continuous tube with bends and curves to match the shape of the airship. To get the air beam in place, it needs to be threaded through the loops inside the ellipse. And there's over a hundred of them. You know, it turns out that threading the air beam through the loops messes up how the inner poly cell sets in the inner nylon shell on the air beam. This is the air beam inflated outside the airship. And this is the air beam inflated inside the airship. The air beam inflates perfectly outside the envelope, but it's just a mess after the threading. The long runs are good, but the inner and outer nose segments are just not going to work. We've done four trial inflations and it's just time to find another way. The solution has three steps and they all involve a whole bunch of sewing. The first, all the pressure loops get cut and Velcro added. The second, a three foot long zipper is added to the nose of the airship. And third, a new set of pressure loops get made. When this is done, we can inflate the air beam outside of the vehicle then slide it in through the nose, then attach it to the wall with the Velcro loops. Then we'll make a second set of 100 pressure loops. The loops on the wall will only hold the air beam in place. We're about halfway done with that mod. If that solves the problem, next we'll be doing the test inflation with the inner helium cells involved. We've already made the cells. The ellipse uses four of them. It's just a matter of putting them inside, pumping them up with air, and then when we're happy with the fit, we'll be adding the plumbing, the fill ports, and the release vents for controlling the helium. Now on to Bellavia, our submarine. The submarine is our development tool for spacecraft systems. Systems like life support, human AI control, integration testing, and all the other things involved in putting a person in the middle of your tech. The sub is now ready to go in the water for the float and trim tests. To get to the water, we need a trailer. We've been hunting for a used two axle boat trailer that we can modify for the submarine. The trick is that it needs to be no wider than 94 inches at the wheels. We need to be able to get it under our crane so we can lift up Bell and get her on the trailer. You know, I have no doubt that even just the first float test is going to create 
a page or two of to-dos. So we're pushing hard to get there so we can get started. We are in triage mode on submarine development. Anything not absolutely needed for first dive is being moved off to phase two. The reason is that we're gonna learn so much from the first dive, it will likely result in changes to a lot of systems. We want to learn those lessons first, then incorporate them in. Concurrently, we are getting ready for the five hour life support system test. This will be the last major test before first dive. It seems fitting for an artificial intelligence submarine to have an AI generated logo. We used Midjourney AI image creation tool to create the images and then added our own touches. This is it. We will be printing it out and then putting it on the conning tower. I want to throw a new term at you, Atmo hacking. We have become atmospheric hackers at JP Aerospace. Now, everyone watching this video has heard of the helium shortage. Now, it's not a shortage of the resource. The U.S. vents more helium into the atmosphere every day than humanity has ever used. It's a mess caused by lack of capture, price supports, storage, and transportation problems, along with just a ton of politics. But no matter what the reason, helium is hard to get and it's expensive. And all this has a major impact on our program. Now, if you followed me for any length of time, you know my rant about why hydrogen isn't an option. So I won't bore you with it again. We need to produce our own helium. Now, there are a few ways to get helium. You can mine it, you can extract it as the byproduct of natural gas extraction, or you can pull it out of the air. Yes, there is helium in the air. It's there at six parts per million. Not much, but it's there. Pulling it out of the air is a process called chirogenic fractional distillation of liquefied air. It involves cooling the atmosphere down to near absolute zero and then pouring off the different liquids. This is actually how neon is produced, and it works. So why isn't everyone making helium this way? Well, that's an easy one, because it is outrageously expensive. It's also difficult to make it this way at the volume that industry needs. We've come up with a new technique for chirogenic fractional distillation that looks at the problem rather backwards. The result is we may have a technique that is dramatically cheaper. We've conducted a pile of tests and two runs with a very crude system. I can't say yet that it will fully work, but the results are looking very strong. And we even extracted a little helium. We need to put a lot more work into this to see if it's viable. Then we need to even put more work into it to get it up and running. This may all be for naught. However, if there's no unexpected gotchas, my guess is that from a year to 18 months from now, we'll have a small scale helium production plant up and running at our launch site. This is likely not scalable. So we're not gonna go into the helium business. However, it is our goal to be completely self-sufficient for helium for the entire airship to orbit program. Time for the shameless promotion. One of the ways we pay for all this is through Patreon. Patreon is a membership service, a bit like public television or a gym membership. You can sign up to donate $20, $5, or even just $1 a month. It really adds up and it keeps our space program alive. There is a link in the description below to our Patreon site. With the big push on the Ellipse airship and the submarine, 
our engine work has fallen a bit behind. One of the big challenges of the Airship to Orbit program is everything is so interwoven. The engine performance drives the size of the airship and vice versa. You can't get too far ahead on any one of the systems. If you do, you could end up with engines that aren't right for your airship. Well, we're catching up. We're making components for a new series of tests combining our hybrid paraffin acrylic motor blocks with the new magnetohydrodynamic units that use cement MHD channels. I made a short video on the making of the cement motor parts. There's a link to that video in the description below. These tests will let us start optimizing the amount of potassium that we use in the motors. The potassium acts as an ionization booster, helping the magnets grab onto the plasma better. The first two engine firings will be just to make sure the new parts work at all. If they do, we expect there to be about 10 additional firings in this series. We'll be starting the test firings in just the next couple of days. The next mission on deck is the Away 133 high altitude balloon flight. This will be flight number 201. We've penciled it in for mid-August. This mission is primarily a systems upgrade test mission. It will be a fairly lightweight one. In addition to the system upgrades, we'll have four cameras and a load of 50 student PongSat payloads. We haven't flown at all this year, and I think the team is itching to get back in the air. Old number 14, our mission control van, needs an overhaul. The last seven years, we've been launching from our own site, not needing a remote mission control. I'm afraid it's been a little neglected, but we're fixing it up and pressing it back into service for tracking and recovery support. We've pulled the fuel tank, swapped out all the lines and hoses. When we've got that all done, we're going to be putting in a new floor and a new electronics backbone. Old number 14 will ride again. There are also all kinds of smaller things that we've been working on. For example, we finished restoring the two donated ATVs and they're now up at the launch site, ready to go on balloon chase. We've also almost finished the Jigger Chase vehicle's electric conversion. We just need to install the brakes. We're also gearing up for a bottom mapping expedition at the lake where the submarine will be doing its first dive. Then we'll be starting boat handling practice for the team. I'll be in a kayak representing the sub and the team will be doing approach and support maneuvers in our two support boats. We want to build up some experience and get this right before we put the submarine into the mix. We are also doing some needed site improvements at the Area 42 launch site. And finally, three of our four 3D printers broke down last week. So we'll be tackling that as well. If all this gives you the impression that space programs are big, complicated things, well, you're right. There's a few more odds and ends, but basically that's what's happening here now at JP Aerospace, America's other space program. I need to get back to it. Lots to do. Thank you for watching.